Hello and welcome to Encore. Coming up in today's movie show, we take in Philippe Garel's nuanced study of relationships. In the Shadow of Women tackles the complexity of love and betrayal. Director Brad Payton has us quaking with fear as San Andreas hits our screens. The summer disaster movie hazards a guess at what the big one is going to look like if and when it hits California. And we check out the best of that famous boulevard. Paris's annual Champs-Élysées Film Festival brings French and American cinema together with a few indie premieres from across the pond. For all that, I'm joined by our film critic, Lisa Nesselson. So let's get started. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us. Hello. Now, we're starting with a new release from Philippe Garel, In the Shadow of Women. This film is really simple, a black and white depiction of a love triangle. And in terms of Philippe Garel's work, he re revisits the same themes quite often, betrayal, secrets. This is a very French sort of film. And do you think anyone's going to be rushing to see it? Well, the surprising and heartening answer is yes, absolutely yes. As you know, I believe deeply in all kinds of movies and that Paris is the best place on earth to watch them. But in my wildest dreams, I could not have made up a more eloquent piece of evidence than the attendance figures when San Andreas, the Hollywood blockbuster, and Philippe Garel's In the Shadow of Women were both released when they came out a week ago at the first screening. Believe it or not, they were almost neck and neck in terms of people buying tickets. San Andreas was released on 20 screens in Paris, and an average of 79 viewers came to each theater. And uh, the Garel was released in eight theaters, and an average of 70 people came to each one. There is no place else on earth where this is Only even conceivable. Paris. So Garel shoots on 35 millimeter film. Everybody else is, is going digital. Uh, the movie is barely an hour and 15 minutes long. It's in gorgeous black and white. It's the story of a poor documentary filmmaker, uh, and his uh, he's married to an adoring wife who helps him make his movies. He loves her, but he becomes sexually obsessed with another woman, and employing uh, the rationalization of male prerogative to well, it's completely within his rights to carry on simultaneously with two women. Let's take a look. Tu sais, toutes les filles se mettent filmer carrière avec des fleurs. Le mari va voir sa maîtresse puis revient avec un bouquet de fleurs. Tu savais pas Mais je sacrifie pas. C'est mon choix. Non. Bah oui. Travailler avec l'homme que tu aimes, qu'est-ce que tu veux de mieux Partager des projets ensemble. Il est là, notre amour. Tu veux qu'on vienne de toi Pourquoi tu dis ça T'es dégueulasse. Personne ne peut t'aimer comme moi. Alors pourquoi tu me le donnes pas, ton amour Pourquoi je le sens pas Qu'est-ce que tu ferais si elle te trompait Now, Garel is a seasoned director. He's in his sixth decade of filmmaking. What do you think his longevity is down to? Well, he's a very uncompromising artist. You know what you're going to get when you go to one of his movies, and they really don't cost very much. Uh, for this one, they rehearsed once a week for 14 weeks, and then they shot in chronological order, sticking to the rule of just shooting each shot once, you know, so that gives you a certain kind of immediacy. Um, Clotilde Corot, who plays the wife, appears without makeup or hairdressing, so I guess that saves some money, and she gives a heartbreakingly authentic performance. Here she is explaining why Philippe Garel's method of working is so Today, Philippe Garel remains a free director, and he also accepts what comes with this. His films are made with a very low budget. He wants this freedom, and so nobody imposes anything on him, so it doesn't cost much. The new wave was also about that. It was a time when directors such as Agnès Varda were free. They weren't forced to hold castings. They weren't under so much pressure in terms of the editing. They could tell the stories they wanted to tell. Now, it's not only his actors who appreciate his style. He's also got some admirers in very high places as well. It, indeed, he does. Um, he, As I said, he's a very uncompromising artist. And um, in uh, he made his first film when he was 20 years old, Marie Pro Memoir, back in 1968. And uh, Jean-Luc Godard's second wife, uh, Anne Wiewerski, uh published a memoir just a few months 
months ago, uh, one year later, an an après, about their marriage, her marriage to Godard and the events of 1968 in particular. And in it, she describes going to a very small private screening of Philippe Garel's first film and how Godard was so moved, he was absolutely speechless at the end. And when he finally thought of what he wanted to say, he went and told Garel, now that you are making films, I no longer have to. High praise indeed. And that poetic spell was apparently so strong that Godard kind of didn't make any movies for a few years. Wow, that's quite impressive. Now, we're moving on to something really very different, both aesthetically and content-wise, San Andreas. Now, this is the summer disaster movie that has left me, certainly, terrified of going anywhere near California anytime soon. It's about the big one, or the earthquake, that we're all waiting for on the west coast of the US. The question is, is the film worth seeing? Well, I uh, I went and saw it on the biggest screen I could find in 3D, and I have to say, it's dumb fun. For example, if you're going to be a young woman stranded in San Francisco during the biggest earthquake in recorded history, then try to make sure that your father is Dwayne Johnson, mm-hmm. because uh, he's a Los Angeles fireman ex- ex- uh, experienced in uh, extreme rescues. He's got about 600 missions to his credit, and he probably acquired a muscle on every single one. Uh, let's take a look. This is enough. You need to get out. And I mean now. Because even though this is happening here in California, you will feel it on the East Coast. Everybody down! Now, we can see there are plenty of special effects going on there. How do they work on the big screen? Well, you know, some of them are cheesy, but some of them are quite effective. I have to say the Golden Gate Bridge was compromised in a way I had not anticipated. And if you're ever visiting Hoover Dam, it's very important, if anything happens to it, that you start shouting, run, (laughs) run, get behind the barriers, run. And if you're contemplating what special effects people can do to a city, lay waste to it, oh my God, is also a very useful piece of dialogue. Right, good. Okay, so maybe one to catch. Uh, Not for those who are scared of earthquakes, though. Now, it's that time of year. It's the time to catch a movie on Paris's most photogenic boulevard. That's the Champs-Élysées Film Festival, of course. That starts on June 10th. It's only in its fourth year, so not yet perhaps that well known, but it does attract a very eclectic mix of American and French cinema. Lisa, what's the idea behind this festival? Well, I think it's designed to remind people that the Champs-Élysées is a terrific place to go and see a movie. Uh, People have started going to other parts of town a little more than that. So during this week, you can wander into any theatre, literally, on or off the Champs-Élysées nearby and uh, and see a good film. Um, A pass for the entire series is a terrific bargain. Uh, The presidents are Jeremy Irons and Emily Duquen, guests of honour William Friedkin, who you may know for uh, The Exorcist or The French Connection, but who's been making some very radical independent style movies for a few years. Uh, they're honoring Alan Parker, the Safdie brothers, and Yusan Palsi, the pioneering female director from Martinique. If you've never seen Citizen Kane on the big screen, run, this is your chance. Uh, speaking of Godard, Godard, his Pierre Le Fou uh, from 1965 will be shown in honor of the film's 50th anniversary. Five films set in Detroit, including Eight Mile, Grand Torino, and the original Robocop. Well, so there's no shortage of big names there, old and new. What stood out for you, though, in the selection? this year? Uh, well, something that is really going to be a, a, a good opportunity is uh, is your only chance here in France, anyway, to see on the big screen uh, a film uh, with uh, Kristen Stewart called uh, Camp X-Ray. And uh, here in France, it's being called The Guard. It stars Kristen Stewart as a young American soldier who joins the army because she wants to help people and gets assigned to the military compound in Guantanamo Bay, where she is warned not to fraternize with the detainees. But she sets up a, she, a war where sort of uh, relationship with one of them, uh, which is the actor from A Separation, Payman Mahdi. I think this is much more impressive than the work she did in Clouds of Sils Maria. And uh, it's, it's quite an important story. Let's take a look. You guys always say, follow these rules, we will let you watch TV. Huh? But if I follow your rules, what does it mean? It means that I'm agreeing that you have the right to give me rules, huh? But you don't. You don't have the right to give me rules. So me, I never agree to follow your rules. Never.
that Champs-Élysées Film Festival on till the 16th of June there. Now, finally, you've picked a very short and sweet selection of re-releases, short re-releases, that is, French vintage shorts. They're tiny films, but there are some big names as well. Jean-Luc Godard, one of them. Yes, he's in the company of uh, Maurice Piala, François Reichenbach and Jean Rouge, all of whom are important. Godard's 1957 short, Tous les garçons s'appellent Patrick, set in the Luxembourg Gardens, sort of about flirtatious... For flirtatiousness and youth and, uh, and the spirit of Paris uh, from 1957. Well, OK, so we'll leave you with one of those shorts, Jean-Luc Godard's 1957, All the Boys Are Called Patrick. Lisa, thanks so much for being with us and thanks to you at home for watching. Remember, you can get more culture news on our website. We're also on Facebook and Twitter. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. Allez, quoi, soyez chic, après demain. Après demain, c'est bien loin. Et j'ai horreur de prévoir à l'avance. Mm. Pour une fois. Oh, peut-être. Je déteste les peut-être. Vous préférez non Je préférerais oui. Eh, que faire euh, je, je parie que je vous fais dire oui. Non. Ah, ben, je vois le jeu, alors. Oui. <rire> <rire> bon, ben, mettons. Euh, mais oui, oui. Est-ce que je dis oui Bien Sûr. Quand je dis oui, c'est oui. Oui, que nous sommes faits l'un pour l'autre. Oh, regardez là-bas. <rire>